Welcome back. We now switch gears to the People's Democratic Party National Executive Committee meeting that will be taking place the day after tomorrow. Tomorrow it will be the start of the caucus or stakeholders caucus meeting. And then the BOT as well as the next meeting will hold on Thursday. But there has been some level of anxiety over how things will play out. The reason is simple. There are warring camps. The camp of the Yinsong Wike, the FCT minister, and the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar. But hey, let's find out exactly how preparations are on for that meeting. We've been joined on the program by the chairman of the PDP in Kaduna State, as well as he's also the chairman of the PDP uh, chairman's forum. Uh, is, he joins us from our Abuja studio, Mr. Hassan Hayat. Mr. Hayat, thank you so much for coming on the program, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. Uh, maybe you walk us through. Uh, of course, I, I did explain uh, some of the things that will be happening. It's a busy time. You're already in Abuja ahead of these meetings that will be taking place. Uh, walk us through what is expected from this next meeting before we get to some nitty gritty. Well, what is expected from the, as the outcome of the NEC meeting is that the PDP will come out from NEC with a unified position on how to move the party forward. Moving the party forward, the party, this NEC meeting, uh, according to the constitution of the People's Democratic Party, uh, if I remember correctly, one of the articles, I think 21 or so, uh, this states that uh, your party is supposed to be holding NEC meetings, I think quarterly, but the last time this next meeting held was sometime in September under your chair. And since then, we've had an acting national chairman, uh, Omar Damagong. And now there has been this uh, debate about the warring factions within the People's Democratic Party. Uh, how do you think that this is going to impact on the atmosphere of the, of the next meeting on Thursday? And, and what resolutions is the party looking at? Yeah, you are very correct that... Um... Since during the, the term that the national chairman, the national chairman IU was suspended, there have been no neck meeting, and uh, members have been calling for the neck meeting, and the neck meeting has now been slated for Thursday, 18th of this month. Now the issue of warring parties or factions and what you call it, certainly the anxiety. Uh, that was developed as a result of lack of neck meeting has made people to feel that something is not going on right with the party. But I can also say that other organs of the party have been meeting. The BOT have been meeting, the Governor's Forum have been meeting, the Forum of uh, Chairmen have been meeting. Therefore, the activities of the party really have been going on. But the issue of people talking about warring factions, let me be very specific and make it very clear. One, uh, His Excellency Atiku Abubakar Wazir Adamawa, GCON, is the leader of the party. And I don't expect people to be dragging him to be a factional leader because by the constitution of the party, since he became the flag bearer of the party in 19... Uh, 90, uh, 2098, I mean 2018, he became the leader of the party. And he won the primaries last year, uh, became and continued as leader of the party. So I will not expect a leader of the party to be having any faction. The fact that there are different interest groups should not be looked at as faction. And I don't think Atiku will do himself any good by not coming out to dispel the idea that he is a functional leader and he has never portrayed himself as a functional leader or pronounced himself as a functional leader. But since we are politicians, anything that's going on, everybody will speak based on what he wants to be known for. And at times, we drag the names of other leaders into it. So as far as I'm concerned, and the way I see it, you talk of function where there is really a breakdown in communications. But the party is moving, and the party is consolidating. And I'm sure that when we come to the end of the meeting on Thursday, I will be proof right. The argument over whether uh, 
is factional or not. It's, it's, it's debatable. I'm not saying him being factional, but the party is clearly divided. Everyone can see that. Since the PDP lost election in 2015, it's not been able to recover fully as a political party. Uh, it's lost three successive elections, 2015, 2019, 2023, and things get polarized as we continue to go on. And Nigerians have been denied the opportunity of a formidable opposition. So what we have in the PDP are isolated voices, not a converge speaking as a political party, which is why we're asking this question. Is the PDP going to put this as a front burner to say we can bury the hatchet and see what we can do uh, to make sure that we stand as one political party and give Nigeria a formidable opposition that is necessary for a, a democracy like ours? Yeah, I must uh, agree with you that, you see, when we are talking of a party having lost elections and taking into consideration the environment in which we operate, you start hearing people or seeing people cross-carpeting, either for greener pastures or some, out of mischief, they say they are leaving the party. Some have even won elections and said they are leaving the party. Then you start wondering, why are they leaving the party when they have won their seats? And the simple thing is that we must accept that our democracy and the political class have not been very, very sincere to themselves and to the country because we are supposed to play this politics with convictions in what we believe in. And therefore, whether I lose today or not, I should agree that there is a tomorrow. And if there is a tomorrow, it means that I can win tomorrow. So even when PDP formed government in 1998, 1999, you see people who lost in other political parties, they rushed to PDP. That has been one of the main problems of democracy in our country. But I can assure you, and I still have that real confidence, that the parties or the interest groups, after our meeting, they will see the need to come together and forge together and make the party a viable party, a pride of everybody. There is a question everybody is asking, and I'm going to ask you one after the other. 16 lawmakers came out and said yes. they do not appreciate the leadership of Umar Damagum, that since he became acting chairman, They've lost court cases, they've lost elections, he's not been able to rally the party. In fact, they're accusing him of being in bed with the opposition in some parts of the country and all of that. Will a decision be taken on his status as the ch acting chairman of the party? You see, the issue of uh, Damagun, Ilya Damagun as chairman, he is acting chairman of the party. And let us not forget, that there is a court case still pending, that Ayu, Professor Ayu, went to court to challenge his suspension. And that case is yet to be determined. And as long as it has not been determined, Damagu is only in acting capacity. Now, when he is in acting capacity, as a leader, there are people who appreciate what he's doing, and there are people who feel that he's not doing enough. But if he's not doing enough, I always call on people. If somebody is not doing enough, what are you doing yourself to assist? Because the party does not belong to Damago. It belongs to all of us. It belongs to Nigerians. And Nigerians are looking onto PDP. So he will just sit down and say he should go. I'm not standing for him because the whole thing is that he did not contest for national chairman. Circumstances brought him to take over the leadership of the of the national chairman uh, of the party in acting capacity, and it is still in acting capacity. If today the court order is given, or Professor Ayu withdraw his court case, it is then that there will be a vacant seat for people to now say, okay, what do we do? But for now, as long as there is that court case, Damagu as deputy national chairman North, is the only person that can occupy that seat as acting national chairman. All we need to do is to rally around him, support him with advices and all that is required for him to take the party forward. And if he says that, if you ask him to resign today, 
is he resigning as acting national chairman and also as the deputy national chairman north or what? That means creating a vacuum. So I think All right. we, the party members, most of the party members are the leaders, are aware of this. And therefore, the issue of whether there will be any crack, real crack that will threaten the unity and the progress of the party after the Thursday meeting, I don't foresee it. So at the end of the day, uh, it has to be a serious consideration for your party, given the reputation or the, the status of your party, given the fact that these 16 lawmakers have said that it's either it goes or they leave the party. But I said two issues. The second is the wiki factor, the Nyesom wiki factor, the AFCT minister. Uh, some are calling for his expulsion, like, forever. They feel like... It's, it's embedded with the opposition. It's a clog in the wheel of progress of the opposition party. There are so many things that have been thrown at him. Is there going to be a concrete decision as to the status of the FCD, FCT minister, Barista Nyeson Wiki, as a member of the party? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to speak on behalf of Wiki, but I am saying that Wiki, as a member of the party, is covered by the constitution of the party. If there's anything that Wiki has done, whether it exists or imagination, all we need is to invoke the provisions of our constitution in dealing with it. Anything outside the constitution is definitely not going to help the party or help the nation. We must all realize that both within the political parties and at other fora, one of the main concerns and the problems of the country is lack of adherence to laws of the land. Once we can start learning, or rather uh, discipline ourselves to accept the position of the law, whether it favors us or not, certainly the country will move forward and the political situation will improve. So if anybody is of the opinion that uh, Wiki has done something wrong that he should be punished, let there be a constitutional procedure in punishing him. It is not just you come at a meeting and say which should be punished. No, there are constitutional provisions and we have to follow it. So all of this, at the end of the day, we are hoping that there will be uh, some level of outcome. But let's talk about uh, the future uh, of the People's Democratic Party. We've said they've lost three successive elections and they don't seem to, the party now, don't seem to have rallied itself strong enough. And there's an, there's an election coming. How are preparations for that particular election? You are the chairman of, the, of all the chairmen of the party. So let me posit this within the confines of, uh, uh, of your status. Uh, how confident is the party that we is have, going to make we, an impressive run uh, in the next set of elections that are coming up as we round off? Uh, I will say it very simply. We have accepted that we lost because that was the pronouncement of the laws of the land, of the courts. But we know that we didn't lose elections. Uh, well, and because I, we didn't I, lose elections, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. that the public... You don't understand what I'm saying? I'm not, I, I'm not sure I understand. What we have you... accepted... I say we have accepted that we lost the elections by the pronouncement of the courts. But we believe that by the votes of the people, we won the elections. And because the people are what really determine victory, we believe that the future of the party is very, very bright. Well, we're going to see how that plays out. We needed to just check in on you to find out how you're preparing. But the facts are there. 2015, the PDP lost. 2019, the PDP lost. 2023, the PDP lost as we speak. The House is not together from the public perception we're seeing. That's why everybody is curious to see how this battle will play out on Thursday, uh, as far as the divided camps are concerned, because apparently a lot of grandstanding happens within political ranks. But we must thank you, the chairman of PDP Kaduna State, as well as the chairman of Forum of PDP Chairman in Nigeria, Mr. Hassan Hayat, joining us from Abuja studio. Thank you very much, and thank you, listeners. We wish our country, and the party in particular, the best in the years ahead. All the best as you prepare for your next meeting. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time. And, of course, your usual company. I'm Jeffrey Ozama. Good night.